Hello, today we're going to be building a 5.8 GHz micro FPV setup. Um, basic components are 5.8 antenna available from Banggood, a uh, 5 volt step up voltage regulator, uh, 600 TV line camera from Banggood as well, dip switch so we can change our channel selection, uh, 5826 VTX from Banggood as well, a uh, battery connector of some kind and maybe some loose bits of wire. You can also use these connectors to make things modular. We may or may not use some of those today. Okay, first thing we're going to do is modify our dip switch. I have bent out the legs on this side so that they can be soldered to the casing on the VTX later. Uh, these pins here are going to correspond to a couple pads on the VTX. And that should look like that when you're all done. We have a leg going to channels 1, 2, and 3. We've snipped the ground pin because we're going to need this pad later. After the modifications to our dip switch are done, we're going to go ahead and tin up these legs so we can more easily solder these. Here we have lined up the pins on the dip switch to channel 3, channel 2, and channel 1, and we're just going to solder those on. And then we're going to flip it over and solder these right onto here. Alright, the next order of business deals with the camera here. This comes with a connector that we're not going to use, so we're going to go ahead and snip that off. Uh, you could also use the Pico camera for this build. However, this one has kind of already been used for something else, so we're going to leave that one out um, and just use this one today. Voltages are a little different on these. This one is actually a max of 5, so we're going to see how that runs. It could probably easily just be run off of 3.7. Um, but for the sake of the filtering that this is going to provide, we're going to try it at 5 volts. These three wires here for ground, video, and audio are going to go to the VTX. Our voltage is actually going to go right here to the 5 volt step up. Um, reason being for me in, at this point is that these solder pads just seem a bit bigger than this. Um, so we're going to have to put two wires in here and I'd rather do it on the larger pad than on this one. So we are just going to strip these wires. Now that we've stripped all of our wire, we are going to just tin these up and prepare to solder them to the VTX. Now that we've soldered the other leads to the VTX, uh, what we're going to do with our power lead is uh, make a bit of a special cable here. Just going to take another length of, you know, any color cable. We're just going to use red so the color coding stays the same. Um, cut them a little long, leaving a little more wire so that you can twist them together. Uh, if this is too long, we can cut it after we tin it. Um, so we're just going to tin those together right now. And 
and then this is going to be soldered to the V out on the voltage regulator. Pin's a little long, so we're going to cut it. And then this is going to go to the VCC tab on the VTX. Now that we've got our voltage out going to here and here, we're going to get some voltage in by way of the battery connector. Just going to strip and tin these wires and solder them to the voltage regulator. And then these are going to go to the VN and ground tabs. Last up, uh, we got to prepare our clover leaf antenna for soldering to the VTX. Um, this is going to ship out to you at about 78 to 80 millimeters. Um, we're going to be cutting that down to 65 millimeters. Uh, reason for that is that optimally, in theory at least, um, odd multiples of quarter wavelengths are going to be the best possible lengths. Um, 1.3 centimeters is a little short, so we're going to go up a couple multiples to 65 millimeters, um, which looks a little bit like this. I've already cut this guy to 65, so we're just going to use that one. Um, stripping this can be one of the trickier parts of this build, um, being that you're going to be cutting some of this away. I'd recommend you actually practice this next bit on that first length so that your second time around it goes a little smoother um, but the first part here is just going to be to strip out this outer insulation uh, I'm going to do that just using an exacto blade here should just be able to pull off the rest yep and then you're going to be left with this uh, this braided shielding here. We're going to be stripping into two different ground leads. Um, the easiest way I've found is just to kind of start at the top and pick away about half of that braid to one side or the other. Make sure you don't miss any of the very small leads here just to make sure they are all getting to one side or the other and we're going to twist those up So you should end up with something like that. Uh, this middle connection, we need to strip away that insulation too. Um, same procedure there, we're just going to grab this and carefully strip away that insulation. So it should look like that, and then we are going to tin these up. After you've done tinning the clover leaf antenna, I've just taken the two ground forks and kind of bent them down so that they line up 
with the ground antenna and ground pads. And our last step is just going to be to solder these on. Check our connections there. They all seem to be solid. And there you have it. Ready for power. Okay, well just did a quick test of that and realized that I did forget one very important connection. Um, just need to run one black wire from the ground over here on the 5 volt step up to the grounding on the VTX. Uh, fired it up and didn't get any picture. Um, and just kind of reworked, looked over my connections and seen that I had not addressed that. So we've done that now. And we're ready to plug in a battery here. And right away we got a good solid picture here. Um, not sure if you can see this too well, but try to move the camera. Uh, that is the signal coming from our new VTX here. Looks pretty good. This is my crazy mount. All set. Alright, now that we've powered everything up and we know it's all working properly, just want to shore up some of these connections. Uh, just went ahead and put a little heat shrink here around this part. And then these I'm going to put a little hot glue on and hot glue here. Why it's coming out so bubbly. And that ought to keep it in place during crashes and just general vibration. And I think that's about it. Our setup is complete here and time to attach it to a quad.